I think that's a good point Hank made, man. There's a lot of men going through that, and it's not talked about a lot. A lot of men going through what? A lot of men dealing with women that have higher sex drives than them, and they can't keep up for whatever reason, whether it be work, whether it be, you know, just stuff that they're dealing with. And that's a slow burn right there, like, you know. Because More their mm-hmm. diet. Hmm? Or whether it be their diet, they're not drinking enough cedar watermelon or or tangak ali or mm-hmm. or maca. Just FYI, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Say it just even just going yeah. to the gym. Yeah. The day. We got you, lady. I, be no, I think dudes are in the gym. I, I think that part. I think dudes are in the gym. I, I think that their dietary selection is rather poor because yeah. you could be in the gym seven days a week and, and, so I, go, and I work out five six days a week but if your dietary is trash believe me you're gonna operate like like trash unfortunately yeah. you are yeah. what you eat this is fact absolutely man it's a it's a lot of things that we can do because i i think when it comes to that for a lot of men uh, like their backs are against the wall and they don't really understand how important it is until it's too late and uh, i think she she's gonna t- speak on it maybe in this i watched a, a few videos of hers where she talked about the importance of sex but maybe we may not get into that discussion but for men um we have to make sure that we watch and what we put inside of our body the, the earlier the better and, and exercising like them steps matter you should at least be getting like 10 to twelve thousand steps well eight to eight to twelve thousand steps you know, I, uh, each day, if you if you averaging that, you drinking your water, you eating right for the most part, you sleeping. Because I think people don't understand the importance of sleep. Even me, I try mm-hmm. to make sure that I sleep because the older we get, uh, the more that we are affected by things and we don't realize it. So if if you take care of the core important things, then I think that you, ha- you got a better chance. It's never a guarantee, but you mm-hmm. got a better chance of being able to to keep up. And as men, we want to make sure we give ourselves a lot of opportunity. But just to speak a little bit on this topic as well, um, I was watching the Ultimative South Africa. Have you guys seen it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, up on, it's on Netflix, man. I had been watched it, uh, sat down for a, a change, and stepped outside in front of the computer and I watched it. And it was very interesting. And so uh, I think it's, it's good. It looked like it was one of the, it was a reality dating show uh, where they brought couples on there. And so one of the couples, whether it be the man or the woman, brings um, their mate there in hopes to try to save their relationship, save the marriage. And what they do is uh, they're there, I think, for a few weeks, and then they switch up uh, with other people, and then they date and they come back. It's, it's, a whole, it's a whole lot of that going on. But what I've learned is that um, a lot of people, a lot of women, have built up pain, they have pain, 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 and then the pain is released in the form of cheating because it was a big, a big thing where um, it was a promise made that even though they was trying this experiment now that you wouldn't cross the boundary of getting intimate with somebody. And a few people got intimate, but one was highlighted a little bit more, and she really crushed that guy because um, he had no idea. But she, but what we learned is that she was hurt a long time ago. So the fact that the man wasn't paying attention to what he was creating, she responded in a different way, which we see often. So you got to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's what you got going on? You over there playing CNN. But in, anyhow, the point that I'm trying to make is that you can vet properly, but there's still a potential based off lack of communication that there's a possibility that things can go left and you're not realizing until it's too late. So it not only happens, uh, you, you can vet somebody thoroughly, but sometimes people just grow apart because they just not communicating with one another. So I, well, it, it, go ahead. Yeah, no, that, that was actually really well said, JR. But, you know, there was, a, there was something that you said that really resonated with me. Uh, it was like she was hurt a long time ago. And to be quite honest with you, we have these conversations and we talk about people vetting and paying attention to red flags, green flags, et cetera. But the reality is, is that there are 
a lot of people out here who are hurt, who are dating, who are trying to date or trying to meet people who have not addressed any of their uh, previous issues, right? And there are people out here who want their pound of flesh because somebody did their wrong and sort of they want to kind of enact that same sort of pain. That that that's just the sad reality of, of, of it too. Because a lot of people are more comfortable operating. I find that a lot more people than often are much more comfortable with operating in the dark than actually having the uncomfortable conversation with their significant other about the the trials and tribulations that they've gone through either in their past relationship and what and what they're currently going through in their mind. Uh, it's something too that I wanted to address that she had said. She had mentioned that um, that most most boys that go grow up in a uh, single parent home, I was um, going to address that more, too. Mm -hmm. they, they're more than likely to be the ones that get cheated on, and I'm I'm kind of torn by that because I I feel like it, at least in the generation of our generation, maybe not so much this generation now. But during our generation of growing up, um, I think one of the perks that I would say of growing up in a single parent home was being able to be around women and learning what works. What are they what are they looking for? What don't they like? What do they like? And being exposed to that at an early age, uh, I think that that was a plus for me to to be able to see those signs early on and essentially not, not be in that, in that group of men that get cheated on, you know, and then of course don't know how to handle it or whatnot. But I, I think in most cases, um, the guys that do experience that are the ones that are in a dual parent home, you know what I'm saying? Cause they, they expect the fairy tale or whatever the case may be. So now they're blinded by what can actually happen outside of this protected space yeah that's, that's a, that was an excellent my fault you go ahead no go ahead because i'm saying something else and i do agree with what he's saying you could go ahead, and, go ahead and yeah that was an excellent analysis yo, because you know i'm thinking most of my friends that had the free crib where the nonsense took place it was single parent homes. And like you said, a person that was raised in a dual family, you're looking at it all. You have a whole different perspective on relationships, the mechanics of it. You know, your parents may have shielded you from like the negative for a long time, you know, maybe until you get older and you were able to see, you know, where they had their struggles. But for the most part, you have a whole different perspective of it. So you are definitely blindsided by damn is this supposed to go this way or you're holding women you know on a pedestal because mm -hmm. your mom you know you saw how your dad treated your mom or who your mom was as a person so you're putting them up on a pedestal not realizing not everybody is worthy of that everybody starts out at a level playing field and then they earn that pedestal you know so let me ask the question so should people who grew up in a two parent household, you know, be more wary about dating people who grew up in a single parent household dynamic? I think I think <laughs> that needs to be considered because I did. You know what I mean? When I was realizing like a, a cycle, you know what I mean? It was a cycle of daddy issues or mommy issues or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm the oldest sibling and I'm raising my youngest siblings. I'm essentially the mom, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to escape, you know what I mean? Like I had a situation where literally, you know, my ex was the older sibling raising her two younger siblings. You know, the dad was military. So essentially, and, and the mom just took off, you know what I'm saying? When the last sibling was born. So she was like the mother, it was mad pressure. So she was always like running from them. You know, she to them, she was their stability. So she would move here and then they would eventually follow. She would move to Atlanta. Then they eventually would follow. She would move. You know what I mean? So eventually, yo, she just straight went to another country. And I was in the relationship at the part at the end when she went to another country. So, you know, 
stuff like that. So I'm thinking, okay, if I'm dating people with a similar, you know, to have a similar perspective because they come from a two parent household, I think that needs to be considered, you know, for a young person looking to date, trying to find somebody who's, you know, equally yoked. That's something that they should absolutely consider. 